Okay, folks, AnyConnect Remote Access VPN with AD integration. So I'm going to walk through this step by step. Um, so we're going to use the wizard itself, uh, show you how easy it is. Um, we're going to also have auto deployment for the AnyConnect agent. Uh, we're going to authenticate with Active Directory. Uh, and we're going to test that connection, make sure that it actually is working as expected. Um, so anyway, so when we walk through this, um, I think there's a couple of things that are of value, right? One of which is it's very easy to deploy remote access VPN. And you'll see other videos where I'm doing dual authentication or uh, dual authentication using certificate and AD. Um, but here we're using remote access VPN, um, the wizard itself, and we're going to name the connection profile. So it walks you through step by step. Um, so here's the connection profile name. We're going to assign it to the proper interface, in our case VPN. Um, here we're only going to use SSL. Uh, we're not going to use IPsec, uh, although you could. So from here, um, we could also add uh, the uh, most current version that we want to push out. Um, so if it wasn't on the ASA, for example, you could upload that file um, to the ASA and then obviously reference it here. Um, I already have the file uploaded, so I'm just showing you that uh, you know it's there and I'm pointing to it. So we get that, we go next. So here we're going to add uh, an Active Directory uh, um, authentication source. So um, here we'll give it a name. Uh, we'll go in and give it the uh, IP address. Um, we'll say what interface that we're going to actually connect to that uh, from, which happens to be the inside. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll we'll go in and do the specifics right uh, around the connection. So we'll again we'll. Uh, make sure that the IP is correct. Uh, we'll give the uh, base distinguished name. So DC equals VPN, uh, comma DC equals um, com. In my case, uh, we did select server type of Microsoft. The naming attribute is going to be SAM account name. And that's based on Microsoft itself. And then the login uh, distinguished name. So in our case, we're using a service account at vpn.com and give it a password. Um, and that's really all that we're going to do in this exercise in, in regards to Active Directory integration. So we'll just finish up here and then we'll uh, click uh, OK. And you notice that even though we don't have these objects created, uh, we have the ability to do it right here in the interface. Okay, so let's hit next. Everything looks good here. We'll go next. Here we're going to give a, an address pool. Again, if we already had one... Um, uh, uh, created we could reference it here um, in this case I'm just going to start uh, from scratch as if it's uh, all new so we'll give it the starting IP address we'll give it an ending IP address and then the subnet mask and now that objects there and available everything looks good okay next here we'll just adjust the DNS servers. Um, I'm using uh, Umbrella is already there, and that's why it's uh, uh, the reference was there. But um, but anyways, we'll uh, do the internal Active Directory uh, DNS servers that we're using. The domain is uh, VPN.com. Um, we'll just continue, and I think everything from here looks good in a summary, and then we'll uh, go ahead and finish it off. So for the most part, everything looks good, right? Um, there was one little uh, item that we're going to run into later. It, it's around the uh, Active Directory server and the depth of uh, the tree that we're looking at. But I'm going to leave that for later so I can show you, showcase maybe a, a tiny bit of uh, troubleshooting. So here's the group policy. Again, I'm just referencing this. So this was all automatically created, right? We created the connection profile. Um, and now we've created the uh, group policy and it, that was all part of the wizard. And then you can come back in and add additional uh, features uh, that you are interested in or settings, I should say. 
Um, and I'm just going to quickly highlight some of them here. So you saw that I filled in that banner. Um, but there's all kinds of additional settings that you can configure. In our case, there's uh, not much more that we're going to do here. We can also look at the client profile. Um, and here is um, things that are specific to the client itself. So let's give it a, a, a name. And we will assign it to the, uh, the group policy that we just created using the wizard itself. And the client profile, again, um, wasn't uh, necessary outside of that. You may want to um, be very specific in the configuration items on the client itself between different groups of, uh, uh, within the organization. So here we've created it. Uh, we've assigned it to the right group policy. Um, everything looks good at this point. And, and really, um, that's the gist of it, right? Um, for the most part... Uh, we are good and, and ready to go. Uh, the one thing I'm going to showcase here is um, the ability to install additional uh, modules. So we've got a variety of different modules, umbrella integration. We've got our Cisco Endpoint AMP. We have our network visibility uh, uh, module that gives us IP fix data. Um, you could it, deploy the uh, dynamic, or sorry, the um, the um, Dart a program for troubleshooting. So it does analysis and reporting, um, and then you you create the zip file and send it. So that can all be pushed out uh, with the client itself. So we're gonna log in uh, real quick here, and um, what I'm gonna uh, end up discovering uh, when I go to log in into the the web page to to get the client, because at this point this is a clean uh, corporate desktop. There is no uh, any connect agent on it. So uh, I go to the page. Uh, I'm gonna uh, log in, and then I come to find that the, the login fails. So we continue to move along here. All right, so accept that ActiveX, say yes. Okay, everything looks good so far. Ready to go. Okay, there's the page. So we'll, we'll select the right group here. In this case, it's the, the new group that we just created. And we will um, go ahead and put in our user. So this is an Active Directory user. There is no local user on the uh, ASA and, and, and the, the, the login failed. Okay, so not great, but we've got tools at our disposal. So let me quickly uh, reset uh, the connection here, uh, log into the uh, CLI itself. And I'm going to do a quick debug on LDAP. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm logging to console and I'm uh, logging is enabled. Uh, and I also turn uh, the terminal monitoring on so we can see it on the screen. Okay, good. Debug LDAP and we're going to go the highest level for the most detail. Now we'll go back to the client and we'll do a quick login again. Um, and this time we should get some information that sh that should help us uh, determine what's actually going on and, and why we are not able to authenticate. Okay. And normally you wouldn't run into this problem, right? Um, I left this out so we can include a little bit of troubleshooting here and there throughout some of the video series. So you can see the scope is only one level. So I'm actually going to dc.com, and that's as far down as I go within the tree in Active Directory. So what I need to do is actually this user is in the OU users, which is actually below dc equals VPN, dc equals com. Um, so um, I'm going to have to make a change real quick to the settings and make sure that I'm actually looking beyond that uh, top level domain or top level uh, portion of the Active Directory tree. So it's real quick, uh, real quick setting the change. So you can see here there's a couple options. I'm going to make sure that we go beyond. 
Okay, so we apply that. Now we should be able to log in. And at this point, once we do that, we should, if everything's working properly, um, we should get the AnyConnect client and the profile uh, pushed down to the asset. Um, and, and now I'm, I'm ready to leverage the box and, and um, uh, VPN at any point in time. The nice thing about connecting to the uh, browser first is, again, it, it gives you an easy mechanism to push the client out to your end users, whether or not they have it as part of an image or an existing asset that has a client. Um, either or, um, this allows you to kind of push it out to the masses without having to necessarily build build a, a, a you know comprehensive um uh, software distribution point, right? It's all built in within Cisco ASA. Okay, so, you know, a couple of prompts here for the user to accept a couple settings. We're going through the install. Looks like we're getting close. Almost there. Okay. We can see the bottom taskbar. You can see a little light. There we go. Now we're connected. We got a prompt. Um, I happen to have dynamic access policy. So the, the default is uh, to... Uh, uh, disconnect or uh, not disconnect uh, give a message back to the end user um, that they may be restricted so um, that's fine uh, for the purpose of this uh, it, it, it it would be working normally because you wouldn't have this additional uh, access policies so um, I'm, I'm walking through a couple of uh, 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 tabs here on the AnyConnect client so it's fairly robust anyways that's it it's simple easy quick